Hi friends, I'm Chuck, and this is my beautiful bride, Deb, and our cat, cat Molly. Molly. <laughs> and she's purring, and she would not get away from us, so she's got to be a part of the video. But this week, uh, Bob Burton and I were talking about Jesus modeling being in the Word. And Deb and I were talking about this at lunch, that... It's, it's important for us to be in the Word, but that's only one-third of the equation. So we're going to talk about three parts that a disciple and a disciple-maker need to know about helping people get in the Word and allowing the Word to change their life, and also uh, for us as well, you know, we need to do the same thing. So, the three <laughs> parts, all right? The first part is input, second, volume, and then third is focus. So, let's go to the scriptures and then talk about each one of these. And the first one is Matthew 4.4. 4. Yeah, so this has to do with input. input. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matthew 4, 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah, so what is Jesus saying there about the priority, the emphasis of input? That it's as important as food, yeah. as bread. <laughs> <laughs> and that was after Jesus had done what for 40 Yeah, days? had fasted in the wilderness and been tempted. Yeah. yeah, so I think we all know it's super important to be in the scriptures, to read the Bible. But as I was saying, that's only one third of the equation. So let's talk about volume the amount of scripture that we're getting. And we'll go to Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. Yeah, that says, These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. All right, so that's the Old Testament. Here's a New Testament passage in Colossians 3.16. It says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Now, when we look at these two passages, what is that saying about volume? Um, it's... You know, it's just a part of your daily lifestyle, and it's everything from what you decorate your house with, <laughs> to how you speak to your children, to what you put on your doorpost, to, um, yeah, so it seems pretty inclusive as far as, um, like, it's a very, very important part of your life. Yeah. And if you were reading the simple man's Bible, it would just say, read it a lot. <laughs> you know, I, I love that passage in Colossians where it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I think of rich brownies. Have you ever <laughs> eaten rich brownies? I mean, it's just like, Wow, wow. And it, it's in your belly and it's almost like you can feel these rich brownies all the way to the tips of your <laughs> fingers and the tips of your, that's that's how we should be filled with the word of god and here's the reason why how many voices do we have in our ears all day every day so name a few yeah, I think, you know, social media, um, television or streaming services, mm -hmm. um, billboards, uh, other people just talking randomly about whatever. Music. News. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got this constant, heavy volume of the world's 
uh, discipleship, mm -hmm. propaganda, and we need something to stave all that stuff off. We need something that is winning the battle, the spiritual battle in our head. And if we don't get the volume that we need of the Word of God just running through us continuously, the world is going to win. The world and Satan. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So we have input and volume. Let's look at focus. In John 5, 39, Jesus is talking. He says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. So these religious leaders were knee deep in the scriptures. So they had input, they had volume, but the only thing they missed was the boat. Uh, they had completely missed Jesus. So uh, you can be reading the scriptures and you can even get a PhD on the type of gnat that was a part of the plagues in Egypt, but how is that going to change your life or others' life to be conformed to the image of his son, you know? So we do need to focus on some things, and there are several things. Deb made a great comment the other day. In American Christianity, the primary focus is on what? Self. Improvement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How to make yourself better. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what's, there, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of that, but what's wrong with that as our entire focus? Yeah, I think it's, it's very self-focused, very self-centered. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a cross way to put it. But, um, you know, if the Bible is calling us to be selfless and, you know, the fruits of the Spirit are are things that impact others and it's you know even our mission you know to share our faith to make disciples is focused on you know out outwards rather than just inwards mm -hmm. I, I thought I don't think it's bad yeah. to try and you know get the fruits of the Spirit but that if that's yeah. all that you do mm -hmm. then there's an overemphasis on self I think yeah, yeah. so uh, one of the best ways that we can focus in the right areas is just look at Jesus. What did Jesus focus on? You know, um, we don't want to major on the minors and we don't want to be out of balance either. Um, so we need to read the scriptures, all of the scriptures from cover to cover, read it in context and let it fill our lives. But we need to understand what is God focusing on and help me focus so that I'm becoming more and more like Jesus. So, input, volume, and focus. Focus. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, that's helpful. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following and fishing with Jesus.